Hi, yes, it's Vegas video editing time again. I'm just uh, dicking around with it, uh, doing some trials comparison between version 17 and version 18, and in particular with a new uh, encoder that I've uh, found. So uh, before this, I've been using, of course, Vegas for donkey's years uh, now. And yeah, don't get me started on other packages. Yes, I've tried them all. Yes, I've tried the Black Magics. Yes, I've tried everything. Okay, I use Vegas for reasons. All right, so anyway, uh, what I normally do is use, uh, so I've got Vegas 17 here, and what I've done is I've set up a test project um, so that we can do a test render, a 10 minute uh, project here on the timeline, which has a mix of different content because the rendering, especially the, uh, the not only the rendering time, but the f uh, final file size will depend on the type of content uh, that you're actually rendering out. In this particular case, I've got a mix of like, uh, you know, a talking head, Dave in front of the camera. I've got a mix of uh, bench, um, stuff here, which I normally do, and then I've got a screen capture, and screen captures, uh, because they're absolute static images, they basically, you know, my little head changes down here, but like there's no little shaking in the camera which moves pixels like this, so it's absolutely pixel perfect, so that's really great for constant quality algorithms and, uh, and uh, things like that, and also rendering uh, time. It, it renders much faster, like a screen capture video is much faster and produces much sm smaller file sizes than it ordinarily, ordinarily would, unless you use constant bitrate. And you really shouldn't be using constant bitrate for producing YouTube videos. You should be using variable bitrate or uh, a constant quality, which is what I would uh, recommend. And uh, so over for years I've been using like variable bitrate. In recent times I've been using constant uh, quality using the NVENC encoder, which is the NVIDIA uh, GPU hardware hardware encoder supported inside Vegas, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but unfortunately, version 18, they've actually removed the constant quality format. I'll show you this. It's This is what really ticked me off and why I found a new encoder uh, for this thing. Anyway, so we've got a 10 minute test video, so let's render this. Um, I'm doing this on my solid state drive, but uh, it, it really makes no difference where your source materials are and uh, where you're rendering to, I found, because like my network drive where I normally have my videos from, it doesn't impact the render times at all. So a writing, reading or writing from a solid state disk makes no difference. But anyway, we will uh, write to a solid state disk today. Hang on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the project. It's normally 60 frames per second. I'm gonna change it to 30 frames per second because that's just gonna work better with uh, the mixed content here because my capture is only 30 frames per second. And anyway, so we'll do that and we'll save that. And we'll, we'll now render a project. Now, what I would normally do is use uh, 1080p, uh, 30 frames per second, uh, 8 me megabits uh, uh, per second, but it's constant quality, so that doesn't matter, it's just a label. Um, I'm using the Magix, which is Magix Vegas, it was Sony Vegas, now it's Magix Vegas. Anyway, the Magix AVC uh, MP4, AAC MP4 encoder, and this one actually supports You'll notice down here, here it is, here's the rub, right? I support, I, I render in high quality uh, mode using the NV, NVIDIA encoder, the main concept, that'll be that CPU encoding. The NV Inc will use the NVIDIA GPU to actually do the encoding. And I use constant QP mode. Look, there it is, constant QP. That's constant quality mode, which is what uh, programs like Handbrake and things use. I still use Handbrake for my uh, podcast 720p podcast version. I just I've got scripts which I just drag it in and it automatically generates a 720p podcast version for me. But anyway, I would normally use constant QP mode, right? So I I don't think the variable bitrate actually matters here in the constant QP mode. But one thing about this is it doesn't actually let you set the quality factor of the video. So what constant quality is is it analyzes each frame and chooses a bitrate based on the complexity or changes in frames between, you know, it's probably a block of frames or something, not sure of the exact mechanism, but it varies the bit rate all the time dependent to give you a constant quality in your image. So, you know, it, like X amount of loss or X amount of blockiness or whatever. Um, and there's various, you know, settings like in Handbrake, you might use a, a constant quality factor of 22 or 23, for example. What that number is, it depends on the encoder. Don't worry about the actual number, but it's, you know, anyway, constant quality mode, we can't adjust that, but I've been using that uh, for quite some time now and uh, it works well. So here we go. I'm going to run a test. 
we will render to C slash video. So we'll render, go, here it goes. There you go, my screen capture, um, I've done this before and it doesn't really impact uh, anything. So don't worry about the uh, screen capture there. So you can see how it actually buffers. See the frame counter here, how it actually buffers and then pauses. It's filling the buffer with, uh, in this case, 30, I believe. Yeah, it should be 30. Yeah, it's 30 frames. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's pulling in all the frames and doing its little processing and then pulling in the next one. So anyway, this 10 minute video will take about, well, at the moment it's gonna take 320, but that will speed up when we get to the uh, video capture content. It'll just process it faster. So I'll get back to you. Here you go. It looks like that is going to take three minutes and th 38 seconds. 338. And there it is. Uh, 226 meg. So yeah, that's a combination. So let's uh, now try version 18, the new software I just got, and see if uh, this new encoder that I've got actually makes a difference. Right, so this is version 18 here, and let me show you, okay, Magix, AVC, AAC, okay, it's still, it pulled in all my original uh, ones here, and if we go into customize template, here we go, down here, NV Inc, high quality, VBR, where is the constant quality? They've actually removed the feature. I'm sure they have. Um, and so it, it, it's it's Gonski. <laughs> like, this was like the single thing that I used on Vegas. Yeah, I like, I, I can do VBR. Like, if I'm doing a 1080p video, for example, uh, then I might typically use an average bit, ma bit rate of 8 megabits. Uh, that's what YouTube recommend, I believe. But it depends on the content. If I'm shooting my lab content like this, like, not much is moving, just my talking head is moving around or the product's moving around in shot. It's nothing really that requires a high uh, bit rate because the, the more content you have moving frame to frame in your video, the higher bit rate you're going to need to keep the same compression and to stop it going all blocky and, you know, losing the quality and stuff like that. So I typically, because uh, uh, my camera, I think at 1080p, I'm shooting at 28 megabits per second, but I might have like a maximum of 20. So it'll peak. It'll change the variable bit rate and stuff like that. Um, so if I'm going to use VBR, oh, well, actually, I, I will do a VBR version of it and, um, and just compare the file size, actually. But if I'm doing a, a like one of my outdoors videos, for example, my one of my canyoning videos where there's you know trees and things moving and the camera's shaking and doing everything else, I'm going to use much higher bit rates uh, than what's here. So you know don't take this as you know if you're outdoors shooting, you know you don't want like an eight megabit average uh, video perhaps. Anyway, and of course if you go into 4K content, you would have higher. I've got different settings for uh, 4K. Anyway, what I wanted to show you is a new encoder because. This, they've removed the constant quality encoding from NV Inc on version 18. Unbelievable. I'm going to need another uh, encoder. And uh, thankfully, um, some people over on the uh, Vegas Creative uh, Community Forum, they actually um, helped me out and they recommended this one, which I've never heard of. So thank you very much. It's called Vucoder. If I'm pronouncing the vocoder, vocoder, um, and uh, look, it supports Adobe Premiere, Adobe Media Encoder, After Effects, Vegas Pro, and Virtual Dub 2. And by the way, you have to download the core version here, and also the plugin that you want for your thing. I just downloaded the plugin and it didn't work. I didn't know I had to download the actual core version. But um, yeah, this is a plugin for uh, Vegas. So this is uh, absolutely fantastic. And it supports H.264, X.264 constant quality, just like Handbrake uh, does. Absolutely fantastic. Now you can actually integrate Handbrake and X.264 with Vegas. And I've tried to do it, but I had like audio and video sync issues and it never worked properly. And you had to use like a frame encoder intermediate format thing. It was a real pain in the ass and I just gave up uh, trying to do it because I love Handbrake. But I don't want to have to do a two-step process. I don't want to have to, I used to do this many years ago. Uh, for all of my YouTube videos, I used to render in super high quality, super bit rate uh, from my uh, from Vegas, and then I would use Handbrake to then um, uh, transcode that into a for, you know a smaller file size, a uh, constant quality version that then I'd upload to YouTube or upload to my podcast uh, version in 720p, which I still do by the way. So I still use Handbrake for that. But so yeah, if we go back here now because I've installed this, we've now got the Vucoder plugin, 
And I've got this and let's have a look at the customized template. Now you can't actually do much here because it's all inside the actual program, which I'll show you in a second. But what it does is it actually takes your project settings. So you have to go over to your file project settings. Um, so yeah, so these project settings here are the ones that will render. You can't actually change it. You've got to change it in your project, which is different uh, to how you'd normally do it. But anyway, um, so let's go into here and we'll show you the dialogue box, which pops up. Here it is, there we go. So we can choose our codec H264 and we can use the Nvidia card or we can use the X264, uh, which is just the uh, CPU doing it. Or you can choose, you know, any other whatever. But anyway, I'm gonna use an Nvidia NV Inc. Um, and then the options here, I've got a GeForce uh, 1070 card for those playing along at home. And the quantizer value or constant quality factor is set to 23. What do they tell you? The encoding mode to use, choose constant bitrate, constant quantizer, or con or variable bitrate. So we use, it's called con constant quantizer here. I've never heard that, but it's constant quality um, everywhere else I've uh, seen it. And the uh, the quantizer value seems to be like the same as Handbrake, because Handbrake uses X264 uh, as well as the encoded. Handbrake's just a shell program around that. So 23, this is a highly non-linear value. So normally 22, 23 is the typical value you use, the lower the value, uh, the less lossy it is. Like if you, once you get to like, you know, 19, 18, something like that, it's almost lossless. Um, it's, you know, but you'll get really huge file sizes. And if you go to like 25, you start getting you know, pretty lossy, um, something like that. So anyway, uh, 23 is the default value. So we're all gonna stick with all the default values there. Uh, the audio is AAC um, and the output uh, container MPEG-4, you can get different uh, containers for it, but we're gonna use the MP4. Uh, there's nothing else there. And about uh, Vucoder, Daniel uh, Stankiewicz at uh, Lord Vuk, Thank you very much. Um, translation, Bruno T and others. Um, yeah, fantastic. I'm gonna, uh, I might uh, donate to this. Yes, donate via PayPal, I'll do that. Um, and I highly recommend you do too if you use it. So I don't, you know, I definitely don't mind paying for software, um, even free software, I will uh, support them. So anyway, let's give it a go. Okay, render test three, VUCODER, and we will now get a better uh, box. Version 18 has a better rendering box here. Um, so that's really good. And it shows you the rendering duration. So that's not gonna go down. So already you can see it's fast. It was three minutes 38 before, and it's saying it's gonna do this in, well, you know, two and a half minutes, something like that. So it is faster than NVENC. And I just uh, rendered my mailbag video with it, and yes, it was much faster. And you'll see, oh, there's a, no, there's basically no buffering there anymore. Look how fast that's going. So as you can see, yeah, there's no buffering. It's much faster. It's faster than real time. So this is a 10 minute video and it's gonna do it in two minutes, under two and a half minutes. My, uh, for a reference, my 50, latest 52 minute mailbag video, I rendered it with this, these exact uh, settings, and it took uh, 14 minutes um, and 20 seconds or something to render a 52 minute mailbag. So that's pretty schmick. Yeah, two minutes, 34. Sweet, so that's, that's more than a full, that's more than a minute quicker. Wow, that's like a third quicker. That's that's fantastic. Wow, just there, it's worth uh, using. Anyway, so let's have a look at the uh, file size. Let's see what we got. Aha, uh -huh. unfortunately it is, yeah, I noticed this with my mailbag and I mentioned this on the uh, forum as well. It is much higher in file size, 360 meg. So we can actually tweak that though with that uh, QF value, that constant uh, quality value. We can actually tweak it because obviously we weren't able to uh, tweak that value in version 17. So it's obviously using a more aggressive uh, compression there, which uh, I, I can play these uh, videos, but look, I, I've had a look at these before and you really can't pick a difference uh, between it. So I might actually experiment with the uh, quality factor there. I think I'd be surprised if I can't go to a value of uh, 24 there actually. So yeah. Yeah, there you go, but that's quicker. And just for completeness, I will re-render that using a uh, variable bitrate. There you go, high quality, variable bitrate, VBR, boom. And here we go, we're going variable bitrate. And that's gonna take longer than the constant quality. And constant quality is better than the variable bitrate. So yeah, um, <laughs> why you wouldn't use the constant quality, I don't know. Yeah, it's, now it's gonna take three minutes 20. But what I'm really interested in is the uh, file size. 
And there you have it, uh, 3 minutes 11, so that's significantly uh, slower than the constant quality, and, and that's curious, isn't it? It's almost precisely only one kilobyte difference between the constant quality and the VBR version. It's just <laughs> sheer coincidence, I'm sure. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, I need to tweak the uh, Vucoder uh, one, I think, to, just to get the file size down. I don't want it to be smaller. Like, I was happy, super happy with the quality that I was getting. There was no degradation in the constant quality I was getting from the uh, version 17 uh, Vegas in, um, NV Inc. In encoder. So, you know, there's no reason to sacrifice uh, larger file size um, if it's not actually necessary. So, anyway, I'll experiment that. Like, I could pl actually play them. Now, but you know, okay, trust me, you're, you're, you're not gonna, gonna you're not gonna pick the difference. Like the quality is gonna be, like you know, like there's the right. You, you've got to go full screen. There it is. Right. You are not gonna pick the difference. I guarantee it. Yep. I I guarantee you're not gonna see it. <laughs> you're not gonna see the difference. So that's the Vucoder one, and this is the version 17. Yeah, you're not going to see it. This is not a polished oh. <laughs> edit. <laughs> Where am I holding stuff Thanks. up to the camera? Oh, come on. There we it's go. Enable product shot, but that, there it is, a little trick board. Yeah, no, it's yeah. like it's you're, you're not going to pick the difference. Issue to hand. There it is. Yeah, the screen capture, pixel so perfect, absolutely pixel perfect. Sort of no, no problems with whatsoever. So yeah, there's no point uh, like pissing away an extra like hundred and you know forty megabytes there like you know it's like increased by like a third file size so yeah there's no point but I like the uh, Vucoder thing so thank you very much uh, to those on the Vegas Creative Forum for pointing that one out that's I'm going to use that even though the bastards at uh, Magix seem to have removed <laughs> the constant quality encoding. From version 18. Unbelievable. Don't know why. If you know why, leave it in the comments down below, please. But yeah, anyway. Um, and I had crashes with uh, this, but I've, I've done a few tweaks to it and it, it doesn't seem to crash now and the encoder seems rock solid and pretty darn happy because it's using um, uh, the X264, which is what encoder, I believe, which is what Handbrake uses and I, I'm super confident in that. So yeah, it looks like I really got a good solution now with version Vegas version 18 and I've even got even faster encoding, uh, so rendering, as I call it. So uh, absolutely fantastic. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Catch you next time.